to do that, that do, so you're saying that the, the, those books led led all these women astray the power of those books and a few leaders a few misguided leaders with the support of the media you okay. have to factor in the media which was overwhelming for example uh, all the, you can find your book that was Friday Week Rise when all the women's magazines in this country joined together in a consortium to, to promote the Equal Rights Movement very extraordinary. There wasn't one woman's magazine that said, no, this is a bad idea. I think there were 33 of them. And uh, the, the book did have a big sale, but you, you read what uh, a lot of the feminists say, and many of them do trace uh, their attitude to uh, uh, feeling that they were somehow mistreated and they somehow related to this. And uh, the real liberation of women is a private enterprise system that has made the home uh, such a delightful place. It's, 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 given, it's given women a lot of extra time to feel sorry for themselves. Now, when, when I got married, the thing I wanted most in the world was a dryer so I didn't have to hang up my diapers on the line so I could put the dryers, the diapers in the dryer and dry them. Now, now you all have paper diapers and it's... it's it, 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 just think of all the, the hours of time uh, that that is saving the housewife. Uh, so uh, a lot of them do have time to think about how unhappy they are. <laughs> I know you talked about the differences, some of the differences that you notice between men and women and the, how the other girl uh, mentioned the disparity between uh, male and female CEOs and the numbers. Do you think there's any differences between men and women that kind of make men better at CEO positions than women are, and what jobs in the workforce women are better at? Do you have any information or insight on that? Well, I do think that there are jobs that men are better at and jobs that women are better at, yes. Now, in the matter of a CEO, uh, the first place to be a C CEO, you don't get it on a 40-hour week. Uh, these are people who put in 20, 30 years of their life with 68 hour weeks. Now, most men, uh, most women are not willing to do that because most women would like to be married and have children, or at least one child, and, and they, they want to take time out. Now, this is a big interruption, so you have that problem. Now, on the ability, uh, I look at my family, I have six children, and I think they're all terribly smart, they all got a couple of degrees, they all do, do all very clever things, but I can tell you, out of, the, out of the six children, the only one I see CEO talent is my youngest, who is my daughter. Now she is running a business, but I look at my, the ones who are doctors and lawyers and mathematicians and all, all this part, they don't, they don't have the CEO, so uh, I don't, I, some people have it and some don't, but it, it takes an awful lot of work to get to that position. And by and large, I think most women will not put in the hours and the years uh, to achieve CEO. And again, I refer to Carly Fiorina, who had the, probably the top job of uh, any businesswoman, and she said, there's no glass ceiling, it's there, you gotta go for it. Thank you so much for your lecture here. It's really inspiring for me to see a little solid, feminine, strong woman speaking at DePaul and speaking the truth. So it's really awesome. So thank you. <laughs> Some of the worst experiences of my life were my college years actually at Loyola University. Um, <laughs> It was, and you know, the worst part of it all came from the Women's Studies Department, actually. And um, it's a miracle of God that I'm still alive and I'm able to be a strong woman because they really objectified me. But um, one thing that I really think that the feminist movement has done that um, a lot of people don't talk enough about is I think that the feminists are directly responsible for degrading men to the point that men are portrayed as objectifying women. I think that the feminist movement has emasculated men. And I think that that has happened through
through their hijacking of the American education system. Um, you know, and some people have been brave enough to talk about and write about this, but you can see it from, you know, preschool all the way through college, especially in college. You know, and it doesn't matter if the professors are male or female. Oftentimes they have that feminist pedagogy where we're in a big group setting, you know, and everybody knows something about something, we should all share about it and talk about how we feel, versus the professor being the person who knows and teaching the student. So I'm going to speak a little bit to that concept of, you know, how education has been deconstructed and feminized, and how the feminist movement has really distorted the idea of what it means to be a man. Oh, well, I think you make a very good point, and that's why I, I'm happy to recommend Harvey Mansfield's book called Manliness, and the importance of manliness, and uh, what it takes, and it's a certain ability, it's a certain self-confidence, uh, in, in taking a position of risk to achieve a uh, goal. And it's extremely important. And yes, I do think that the educational system, beginning in the elementary grades, is extremely unfair to, uh, to boys. Uh, I'll give you some examples. Uh, one of the big trends in elementary schools today is the elimination of recess. Now, that is a terrible thing to do to the boys. Uh, if anybody who's had children knows, you've got to let the boys get out and run around and wrestle with each other and try to beat each other up so they can come in and sit down and learn something. And you take away recess, the, the boys are not going to be able to sit still on a chair and do neat work like the girls can in the elementary grades. It's just not in them. They're boys. They're different. And, and so when the boys can't sit still, uh, then they want to give them riddle. They think they're a behavior problem. And the feminist view of, of little boys is that they're just unruly girls. And, and they have to make them conform like girls. Now, this is so wrong to, to the boys. And uh, it's going on all over the country. As some, some new schools are being built even without playgrounds. They can't play tag anymore. They can't play dodgeball anymore. And uh, of course, this idea that you, you can't be offended. I don't know where it got, this idea came from that you think you have a constitutional right not to be offended. Uh, and, and, and boys like to wrestle. And they ought to be taught, OK, you can have your fun with the boys, but you can't hit girls. You know, I, I'm one of these the commissions I was on. I said, well, why don't you teach the little boys you just don't hit girls? Oh, no, 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 you can't do anything gender specific like that. Uh, but uh, the Mansfield book, Calling for Manliness, is, is extremely important. And um, the, uh, another aspect of their damage they're doing is, is spreading this whole notion that men are naturally batterers of women, and women are naturally victims. So anything a woman says, has to be accepted as a, a fault of the man. And this is going on in, in divorce courts, in, in child custody battles, in, uh, in job uh, situations, uh, all sorts of things. And uh, you're just going to have to have more people who stand up and expose how unjust this is. Uh, in, in a lot of these adults, the men simply are not given the same constitutional rights that prisoners have, or that criminals have in this country. Because uh, a lot of these judges accept whatever, uh, uh, whatever the woman says. And it's, it's because of the inculcation of this notion that, that it's the nature of man to beat up women. And uh, I think that's absolutely false. I, I think you're, sure, some men are slobs, but they're also uh, wonderful men who are husbands and fathers and trying to do the right thing for their family. And uh, I look at my family, it is absolutely beyond comprehension that any man in my family could ever hit a woman. It just couldn't happen. I, I understand that this does take place among some people, and, and uh, we have laws against assault and battery in every state. Um, but uh, you should have none of this thing of it's just accepting the word of some woman without any evidence. Good evening. Uh, about five or six years ago, I moved to Europe to a country called Slovakia. Uh, and uh, I kind of, I left here 
I'd say is a feminist, essentially. I had some very strong feminist viewpoints. Uh, we're all equal, this kind of thing. Um, and what the definition of equality is in that way, I have issues with. But in Slovakia, I saw so many women, culturally, they reject feminism. Uh, Slovak culture doesn't want any part of it. Many women, many men are very comfortable in their traditional roles. Uh, I also have problems with those roles, but what it means, you know, must I do something if I'm a man? And I just...